Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're talking a little bit about Tesla's situation in China. We have received some more August numbers over the last couple of days, and it has created a little bit of confusion, so we'll talk about what's going on there. We've also got an update on Tesla's Giga Berlin factory tour event for October. Some news, a little bit of news here on the Cybertruck coming from a Tesla Glass video. Then we've got a few other things, including revisiting those Lucid EPA numbers. Those have actually now been published, and it might give us some insight into where Lucid ended up in terms of their efficiency and their battery pack size. Tesla stock on the day today, kind of continuing the trend that we have seen so far this week, where I feel like it has slowly risen throughout the day and made its way into the green, finishing up today 0.15% to $756.99. That compared to the NASDAQ also up right around that level. All right, so first up, let's figure out what's going on here in China. A few days ago, we had talked about Tesla's wholesale sales numbers, which remember that's the term China uses for the sum of domestic retail sales combined with export numbers. That was reported to be an all-time high, 44,264 vehicles. Since then, we did get the retail sales and the breakdown between Model 3 and Model Y. Same with exports. I think we talked about those as well, maybe just not the split between Model 3 and the Model Y. But what we're going to focus in on today is that retail sales number. So that was 12,885 vehicles, most of that being Model Y, about 11,600 there of the Model Y. Now, people care about the retail sales number because that is domestic. That's China. So it gives us an indicator of what demand is there in China. And there have been, I believe, justifiable concerns about that earlier this year. So while I don't generally care too much about things that are primarily demand focused, in this case, it is understandable. Anyway, we saw those 12,885 sales reported, and then we did get a report from d -Kirk yesterday that there were only 2,800 new Teslas insured in August in China. So it is normal for those insured units to be a little bit different than what gets reported as retail sales, but in general, they are much closer. So this brings up the question of, okay, what exactly is retail sales? What's being reported there? We don't have a great answer of that. And because sometimes sales are reported that are from the factory to a dealership, in general in the automotive business that then begs the question of okay is the difference here between the retail sales number and the insured vehicle number indicating that there is a lot of inventory that tesla just maybe shipped to stores that isn't actually getting sold and insured so obviously if that were the case that could potentially be representative of poor demand in china and then separately as a potential other reason for why this discrepancy is occurring there's been speculation that maybe for those retail sales numbers, Tesla reported their original plan and then actually ended up diverting that over to Europe, hence them then not actually showing up in the insured units in China. And then that would maybe mean that those sales were then overstated or double counted or something like that. So then, of course, you have <clears throat> Tesla bears fanning the flames of that speculation. From my point of view, I think I'm going with a much simpler explanation. So if we look at the difference between insured vehicles and retail sales, Really, it's just Model Y, and this is the first time Tesla has shipped the standard range Model Y, so if there's a little bit of a delay there with the insurance, perhaps that's something to do with this being a new model. So that could be a major factor, and even if not, we know that Tesla is going from exporting vehicles to delivering domestically, which means the domestic deliveries were likely in the latter portion of the month, and perhaps therefore less likely to get the insurance all wrapped up. We have also seen wait times being extended in terms of delivery estimates in China. So if there were a bunch of inventory sitting there, the wait times would obviously be coming down. So for those handful of reasons, this discrepancy is not concerning to me. I did just want to make sure to address it though, because it seemed to be gaining a little bit of traction there on social media. As I mentioned, I do think China demand is worth monitoring and will continue to do that. But primarily what I do care about is production. And we do seem to have gotten a bit of an update here on production. D Kirk also sharing out Model Y production for August, which has been reported at 21,785 vehicles. You may remember that when we got the wholesale sales number, we went through just sort of a production outlook, I guess, just to see how Q3 might shape up. And in that example, we used 41,000 for our Shanghai total. We don't have Model 3 here yet. Troy Testlike did report that that was around 20,000, so it looks like we're sitting at 41,700 or so, basically in line with the assumptions that we used when we went through that production outlook which is good. However, what I do think is interesting here is that for that 41,000 number, we used only 18,000 of those being Model Y based on previous Model 3 production rates. So if Model Y is actually about 3,000 units higher than that, 4,000 actually, essentially that means that Model Y ramped up a little bit more quickly in August than what we would have expected, which bodes well for September. Again, we did have that rumor of potentially a week shutdown for September, so we'll keep an eye on that. But Definitely happy with this August production number for Model Y. 
We'll probably revisit those numbers once or twice more this quarter as we get more information on if there has been any downtime and once we get those final production numbers confirmed for August. All right, next up here, we had a video today published by Tesla's YouTube channel about the Tesla Glass team. It's just about a two minute video, just go over and watch it. But one of the most interesting parts of the video is that at about one minute, 20 seconds in, they're transporting this huge glass panel, which from the looks of it may very well be the Cybertruck windshield. For something of this size, really the only other reasonable options I could see would be the Model X or the Semi. But if you look at the blacked out portions of this panel, particularly on the sides, you can kind of see that there's this part where it kind of juts in. Then if we look at a front view of the Cybertruck windshield, you can see what looks like the exact same design. Looking at the Model X from straight on, we don't see that same angled part. The semi kind of does, but it's also on the bottom rather than the top. And then the blacked out parts for the autopilot cameras doesn't really seem to fit there. So definitely to me, it looks like the Cybertruck glass, which I don't really know what's the purpose of spending that much time on it. It's fun to see parts for the Cybertruck and maybe because the Cybertruck design has been revised, maybe this can tell us something more about what the design is now. All right, next here we've got a couple updates on Tesla's upcoming Giga Berlin factory event. This is set for October 9th and the information here is coming from giga-fest.com. Word of caution, I haven't actually been able to verify that this is for sure a Tesla site. It definitely, definitely seems to be teslamag.de said that they believe it is registered to a Tesla Germany. I just can't confirm that. And the site does ask for personal information like an address and name. So if you are planning to register, maybe just try to confirm it with, I don't know, sales advisor or something. Hopefully in the future, Tesla would just build a page off of tesla.com for stuff like this. But anyway, Tesla describes the event as, quote, you'll have the opportunity to see behind the scenes during a factory tour, visit on-site booths, join various activities, and ride along in Model Y, our newest electric car to arrive in Europe, end quote. There is then a pre-registration form to apply to receive tickets for this event. Tesla says that due to capacity limitations, admission tickets are not guaranteed and guests will receive admission tickets by October. They say admissions not guaranteed because of limited capacity, but that they'll prioritize visitors with a zip code in Berlin or Brandenburg. The event will start at 10 a.m. local time, finish at 7 p.m., but it looks like there are hour-long time slots within that range. All right, next up here, we'll go through this quickly, but we've got a new study published by J.D. Power, their 2021 U.S. Automotive Performance Execution and Layout Study, or Appeal Study, sort of a proxy for how much customers are liking their car. And for the second year in a row, Tesla has scored at the top of this, albeit with a qualifier, as usual, of J.D. Power not being able to collect Tesla data in all states because Tesla doesn't provide it to them. So on a thousand point scale, Tesla got an 893 score, 896 last year, but still higher than any other brand. Porsche coming in at 882, coming in as the runner up in the premium segment. And then for the mass market segment, Dodge leading the pack there at also 882. So nice to see that, not a big surprise. Tesla customers still liking their cars. All right, next up, we've just got a bit of news on other electric vehicles. So I mentioned yesterday that there was the leaked information or broken embargo, I guess, about the Lucid getting a 520 mile EPA range rating on the Lucid Air Dream Edition. Uh, Lucid today has now posted a press release confirming that, as well as the ranges for a few other trims. Remember, they split the Dream Edition into Dream Edition Range, Dream Edition Performance. Then they've also got the less powerful Grand Touring. So with the 19 inch wheels, the ranges here span from 471 miles up to 520 miles. And with 21 inch wheels from 451 miles up to 481. So really good ranges. Then if we look at fueleconomy.gov, we can see the actual listings here for the miles per gallon efficiency that can be converted over into watt hours per mile. And that gives us a guess at what the battery pack sizes might be here. So in a press release last year, Lucid had claimed to get their EPA range of 517 miles with a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack which obviously would be very impressive. The Model S uses about a 100 kilowatt hour pack. Anyway, if we look at the fuel economy page, we can see that the Lucid Air Dream Edition range version is getting 125 miles per gallon equivalent, or it says they're 27 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Just for a little bit more specificity, we'll use the 125 miles per gallon equivalent. We can convert that over to miles per kilowatt hour. That ends up being about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which for a 520 mile vehicle would mean about 140 kilowatt hours. However, the EPA states this based on energy drawn from the wall, and there's some loss in getting that all the way into the battery. So if we look at the Model S, for example, it has a 120 mile per gallon equivalent. That is 3.56 miles per kilowatt hour. So for 405 miles of range, that would mean 113.75 kilowatt hours. But we know from Motor Trend confirming this that the refresh Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour pack. 
So 100 kilowatt hours divided by 113.75 kilowatt hours, that means that 88% of the energy is actually making its way into the battery pack for the Model S. So if you apply that same percentage to the 140 kilowatt hours that we got before for the Lucid Air Dream Edition range, that would mean the battery pack could be somewhere around 123 kilowatt hours or so. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, that percentage does change. It looks like the Model 3 is actually somewhere more around 92%. So depending on where it falls in that range, maybe the battery pack for the Lucid Air Dream Edition range would be 123 kilowatt hours up to 129 kilowatt hours. It could even be a little bit outside that range, but I think that is the most likely. So it looks like they're going with a little bit bigger pack here than what they had said last year. And remember, we had seen them also split into the range and performance versions. So they don't seem to quite be hitting their targets here. Can't really chastise them all that much because, hey, I mean, Tesla even canceled the Plaid Plus, so glass houses and whatnot. But that is just the Dream Edition, and that's going to actually be produced in very small volumes. Lucid has said 500 of those. So actually, the grand touring is a bit more important in terms of where that battery pack size ends up. Just running the same exact calculations on that, it would yield a battery pack size of 117 kilowatt hours up to 122 kilowatt hours. So again, a little bit higher than the 113 they had said before. There's an article here from Forbes that is saying 118 kilowatt hour pack. I don't know if they got that from Lucid or if they're just doing their own math, but that jives up with mine. So I guess 118 kilowatt hours is probably as good of estimate right now as any. Anyway, kind of nerding out on those calculations, but the long and short of it is maybe it's not quite as efficient as what Lucid had hoped, but it is still very efficient in terms of what they're getting out of that size battery. So I think Lucid should be pretty proud of those numbers, but at the same time, this is a much more expensive vehicle than a Model S, and they still have to figure out how to produce it, produce it in volume, and do that profitably. So even with efficiency numbers that do look a little bit better here than the Model S, I wouldn't take that single thing alone and view it as a strong signal that Tesla's lead is diminishing or anything like that. As time goes by, I think people will catch up naturally in efficiency, but that's kind of one of the first steps, right? Then it's all about production, production profitably, quality, all those sort of things. And then as time goes by, increasingly how these companies are going to be able to leverage artificial intelligence like Tesla is and will. So again, you wind up at pace of innovation. Efficiency alone, that's not going to be a very good long-term moat. People will catch up, but by then Tesla's moved on to innovating in other areas. All right, last couple of items here. First, just a quick update on the status of the Chevy Bolt. So of course we know about the recall. GM and LG still investigating those issues, and although they had originally planned to restart Bolt production on September 24th, they've now delayed that until at least mid-October as they continue investigating. Over to Ford then, today they announced that they have started pre-production of the Ford F-150 Lightnings. Definitely an exciting step for them, I'm happy to see it. And they also confirmed something we've already talked about, but investment to ramp up Lightning production eventually to 80000 per year, which of course I would love to see be higher. So that is really it for today, but of course, huge congratulations to SpaceX and everybody involved in the Inspiration4 mission yesterday. Successful start to the mission, which of course will continue over the next couple of days. So incredible milestone there, congratulations. But that's where we'll leave it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, September 17th episode of Tesla Daily, which I think we're going to be doing a live stream for. So probably tune in around 5 p.m. Central Time if you want to catch that live. Thank you.